Hey everybody, so welcome back. So today we're gonna to be working on an effusion. And what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna dramatically change uh, on how this fusion looks. Uh, so as many of you know, um, the fusions had a short uh, run on this particular body style. They only came out in 2005 and 2006. After that, uh, Polaris dropped the fusion body style and just went right to the IQ chassis um, for a lot of reasons uh, with the issues with the 900. So anyway, because of that, uh, all the fusions, for the most part, they all look the same, especially with the 600s. They're either black and blue or black and red, or if you snow checked a 600, you could have gotten a racer one, which was red and blue. But mine is a typical black with blue uh, accents. So if you notice one thing right away, you're gonna say, hey, yours is all black. So what I did is, um, the first step of the process, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit, is um, I painted all the flares from the original Voodoo Blue to black. And so what we did is we just used some Krylon Fusion Paint, which I've had great success before, and we, uh, we taped everything off and we went around the whole sled and I essentially uh, painted all the, the blue trim and flares and everything else with the Krylon Fusion paint. And this stuff actually works very well. I've used it with some other projects and I've had great results from it. So, so another thing you're gonna notice is if we start to look, you're gonna notice that the decals have been removed from the side panels on both sides. And also, the rest of the, the graphics is gonna be coming off shortly. Uh, so we're gonna remove the Polaris logo, and we're gonna also remove the, uh, the decal that's coming off the flare, as well as the one that's on the, uh, the hood. So, some of you wonder, say, hey, what are you doing? You know, you're removing all the graphics. It's gonna be, gonna be completely blacked out. Um, nope, that's not what we're doing. So if you look, Here's a little hint as what we're doing. So retro, and that color is called retro blue. So what we decided to do is we're gonna wrap this sled. So what I've done is I purchased a wrap from Arctic FX. And so let's take a walk over to the bench and I'll show you the design we came up with. All right, so here it is. So this is a retro style theme. Uh, if you go to Arctic FX's uh, site, um, they just came out with a 2016 lineup and what we did is we modified one of their uh, stock wraps and we modified some colors and the design to have it fit the uh, Fusion chassis and so what we're going to do is we're going to go with a retro style theme. So if you look, there's going to be a lot of retro blue with white and red. So, let's take a look at the, the wrap. So essentially that's gonna be the, kind of like the theme right there. That's the side panel graphic right there. Uh, the old Polaris star with a lot of retro blue on it. So, we'll talk about the wrap once we get to that point, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna remove the graphics from the sled. So stay along, I, I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that process is relatively Easy and quick, so let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so before we can wrap this, what we have to do is we have to remove all the uh, original graphics from the sled. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use this uh, heat gun to, to essentially warm up the graphics and peel them off. This is just a simple heat gun with a high and low setting, um, made by Milwaukee. Um, so the only thing you have to be aware of is when, when you're using these type of heat guns is they're not like a hairdryer, they get very hot. And so when you're working with these, you know, you're not going to want to hold it on the sled for a continuous length of time. You're going to want to use a sweeping action to essentially just warm up the graphic enough so you can start peeling it away. So why don't we go ahead and do that now and we'll get the old graphics off. All right, so, so we uh, went around and removed all the decals. And uh, so everything's off. 
And what I did is I went ahead and removed all the vents um, as well. Because I didn't know how much of an overlap was going to be with the wrap and, and I didn't want to have to fight with it um, once I was just trying to apply with the wrap on a sled. So I figured I would just remove the, uh, the vents just to get them out of the way. It wasn't that big of a deal. They just popped right out. And I also removed the, uh, the bezel uh, around the headlight. So that's gone as well. So if you read the instructions from Arctic FX or any wrap uh, manufacturer, what they really kind of hit home on, uh, and they actually repeat it uh, quite a few times, is cleanliness, prep work, and everything else. Make sure you get uh, essentially the entire surface clean before you try to start doing a wrap because you know you want you don't want anything like dirt or anything like that underneath the wrap, showing little dimples or anything like that. But one of the things you have to do once you uh, remove the decals is. Um, you also have to remove over, uh, remove the leftover residue from the decal. So if you look, you can see where the Polaris was. And if you look, that's all leftover adhesive from the graphic. So it was kind of all over the place. So in the kit, Arctic FX supplies you with this uh, adhesive remover. I've already actually used it to uh, remove the adhesive on the on the big graphics on the side panels. And uh, this stuff actually works great, amazing. Um, essentially, you just spray it on and it liquefies the, uh, the old adhesive and it comes right up. Um, so the stuff is really, really good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start removing the, uh, the adhesive from the, uh, the hood and everything else. One thing I'm gonna do is, because this is a freshly painted surface, I'm gonna cover that up because I don't know if what type of reaction the adhesive, the adhesive remover would have with the paint, so I'm gonna go ahead and mask that off, just to be safe, just to take a an extra step in the process. So, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, and we'll go to the next step. All right, so now that you've removed all the decals and everything else, and kind of gave the sled a wipe down, so then essentially the next step, what you want to do is before you start doing any of the decals, is you need to uh, essentially wipe down the hood again and because what it is that adhesive remover needs to be neutralized for lack of better terms and so it, what you want to do is grab the next thing in the kit and so in the kit they gave you this it's a cleaner and silicone remover so what you want to do is once all the decals have been removed go ahead and wipe it down with some clean rags uh, just to get any residue off initially and then once you do that go ahead and spray it down with this and go ahead and wipe the, uh, the entire surface again because again um, cleanliness and prep work is very important on here uh, the last thing you want to do is remove uh, you know start applying the wrap and find out that you have some residue remover still on the hood and then what's going to happen is it's going to eat the adhesive back from the uh, the graphic and uh, it's never going to stick. So make sure you do this and make sure that the sled is nice and clean before you do anything or you're just wasting your money. So I'm going to do that now uh, and um, give it a final prep, get it nice and clean and go to the next step. All right guys, so let's talk about the wrap. So when you get the wrap, what's going to come in the box is obviously everything in the kit. For the application your cleaners a couple squeegees um felt tip squeegee for uh running the graphic down without worrying about scratching the finish and then the uh, the wrap is actually going to come on the uh this paper right so what you want to do is uh, 24 hours before you're getting ready to uh put the wrap on take it out lay it on a flat surface and let it flatten out because it will be curled uh because it's uh in the box they ship it rolled so and then once you're getting ready to actually start doing the layout and actually applying some graphics what you want to do is uh essentially cut the uh the graphic from the uh from the backing paper and what you're going to do is leave like a 360 of an inch all the way around and the reason why you want to get so close is essentially when you take the uh 
the section of the wrap, you can, you know, do the alignment on it and, you know, actually figure out where it's going to be. You know, if you had a, like a three inch piece of the, the backing paper on it, it's really not going to give you a true representation where it needs to go. And then you can start doing the alignment. Um, so what I did is I, I took off, a, I prepped the uh, large side panel graphic. This is the hood graphic right here. And then there's a, another graphic, which essentially it wraps around the back side of that, right? So what I'm gonna do is, because if we look, right, we need to line up the, uh, the star so all the points are accurate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the side panel graphic on first, I'm going to use this as my baseline and then I'm going to essentially line up the rest of the, the graphics to the star so everything uh, matches up. So why don't we go ahead and do that and we'll go from there and see how it uh, turns out on the first couple of applications. So let's do that now. All right, so this is where we're at so far. The large uh, side cover graphic has been applied. The, uh, the wraparound graphic that goes uh, to the left of the Polaris logo is on and the alignment on it looks pretty good so far. Uh, so what I'm doing right now is I'm doing the large hood graphic that's going to go all the way down the hood to the nose. Um, the large graphics, what I've been doing is I've been uh, playing around with the alignment on the left hand side to make sure it's good. And then uh, what I'm doing is just kind of I'm holding the rest of the graphic on the hood with some tape just so as I'm working on the left-hand side, I don't have to worry about it peeling off and getting in the way. Uh, so what I'm doing is uh, I'm only exposing part of the graphic at once and uh, removing the backing paper and then going from there because uh, the larger graphic is kind of a pain just because there's a lot of surface area and there's a lot of uh, potential for an air bubble to uh, get in there. So I'm taking my time in uh in applying this so why don't we go go ahead and uh get back at it and let's go from there all right so uh we have just about the uh, one side done right the hood decal is on right got the two decals that split the hood on right so it looks pretty good um the only problems I'm running into is air bubbles underneath the uh, the uh, the wrap, just because a lot of these graphics are so big, especially the the, the long hood one on the hood. Um, it was very hard to get it on there without having any air bubbles at all. So it may look good on the uh, on the video right now, but if we just zoom in, just like right here, uh, I'll try that hard to see. There's some air bubbles I need to work out on it. So not a big deal. It's just, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, this is the first time trying to do a, do a wrap. And uh, it's one of those things, I think it's an acquired skill. Uh, you really definitely need patience with it. Um, it's not something you'll be able to slap on in five minutes and call it done. You really got to take your time. So a lot of it's just alignment issues and everything else and then, then stretching the, uh, the wrap with a heat gun to, uh, to make sure you get all the wrinkles out and everything else. So you gotta remember it's a, uh, it's not a flat surface. So there's a lot of complex curves in it and everything else. So you have to be very patient with it as you're going along. So, but so far it, it's coming out pretty good. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue on to the other side and just go from there and just plot away. So let's do that and we'll come back. All right guys, so the wrap is all done. Give you a quick walk around to show you the, the final product. Step back. All right. So there's the second side. All the vents are back in. The windshield bezel is back on. The, uh, the second side went a lot better than the other side uh, just because of lessons learned from the doing the uh, the first side um, the biggest issue I had like I said before 
is the, is the presence of air bubbles. And I think the reason why is um, with this particular template from Arctic FX, um, a lot of the, you know, it's, a, it's very good coverage on it. You don't have a lot of seams in the wrap, uh, but one of the things that you have to deal with because of that is the graphics themselves are very big. And because of that, you have to deal with a lot of surface area and everything else. And with that surface area, you're prone to getting air bubbles in the bottom wrap. So it's one of those things that's to be expected. Uh, just deal with it, take your time. This is something that you're not gonna slap on here in, in 10 minutes and call it done. Um, I spent about four hours doing this and uh, at the end of the day, I like how it came out. So the, uh, the only challenge I had as far as the air pocket, I'm sorry, the air bubbles was uh, rippling in the uh, bottom of the wrap as you're basically, you're getting all the air out. And what happens is because this is a complex curve, right? Um, it doesn't want to lay flat. So it wants to pucker up and ripple and everything else. So if you're going to do something like this, if you're going to uh, install your own wrap, you got to get one of these heat guns because if you don't, you're going to go crazy trying to get this thing done. Um, Cause what, what's nice is with the heat gun is once you hit a little heat on the, on the wrap, it'll actually constrict and it'll actually start to lay flat and then you can just continue smoothing it out. So that's the, uh, the trick to getting those, those ripples in the wrap flat on the surface. You know, if you're one of the lucky ones, and you have like an, like an Axis or a Rush or one of the new Skidoo's or something like that where everything is just a bunch of flat surfaces, there's not a lot of curves and anything like that, you're gonna be in good shape. So, um, so again, this wrap was ordered through ArcticFX.com with shipping and tax in the installation kit that goes along with the wrap. Uh, the total to my door was $287. So um, at the end of the day, I think it's, a pretty good option it really transforms the look of the sled to make it something unique i really like the uh the retro theme um, on the newer sleds i think this would have been a uh, a good solution to the fusion to kind of bring it somewhat up to date um, the next thing i'm going to do on this sled is as you can tell the original seat the voodoo blue from players it kind of clashes with the retro blue from uh the wrap so what i'm going to do is I'm going to probably uh, look for a black seat um, from either another Fusion or an IQ and replace that and basically just so it matches and doesn't look so goofy. And I'm probably going to pull all the other wheels off and I'm going to probably, probably black those out too and go from there. So let me know what you guys think. If you, if you like it, hate it, whatever, let me know either way. I don't care. I'm a pretty tough guy. I can take it. If there's any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comments box and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up.